in our previous module, we are already involved with impoliteness. Actually, politeness and impoliteness, they are reverse of each other. And we need for impoliteness to understand politeness. So let's see what impoliteness is. As we have defined politeness in previous modules, so here we will define impoliteness so that by comparison we may understand the both uh, concept, uh, both the concepts which are involved here. It is easy to notice which impoliteness. We can't say directly politeness. We feel that politeness is violated. And there we know that uh, here politeness was absent or here politeness is present. Right? So it is presence or absence of impoliteness which indicate politeness. Impoliteness is defined as reverse of politeness and the main thing is when it happens, there is a relation uh, breaking. It results offense. So this is the uh, thing which is main indicator of impoliteness. And this point was highlighted, pointed out by Culpepper, a known a linguist from Lancaster University. Uh, he is the person who has mainly worked in this area and his book, Handbook of Impoliteness is a very good source to know impoliteness in detail. The assessment of politeness or impoliteness is determined by which factors? As we said that we understand politeness with the help of impoliteness. So how? How we do this? By considering three factors. Number one, relevance. Relevance of the talk to the context of talk. In which context we are talking? First of all, we'll see that. It is in office. It is between a boss and an employee, employer and employee. What is the context of talk? Number two, the norms of COB. What are the norms of that office? that organization, that community of practice. They would decide whether your linguistic behavior was acceptable or unacceptable, polite or employed. And the third thing is gender stereotyping. How people expect that a man should use language and a woman should use language, this is gender stereotyping. Impoliteness cannot be assessed outside of the context of COP. It is only in this context that we can gauge, we can assess its severity and how we can mend that severity, what can be done to repair that loss of relationship which results from impoliteness. So this can be done in the context of COP. And who would assess that this is impoliteness? The seniors and the elders. If this is home and if this is office, the organization, right? So they, the dominant members of the COP, they are the assessors, they are the arbiters. Uh, they would decide, they are deciders that this is politeness or impoliteness. If there is a party at your campus, college campus, or university campus, and you are a female, and you talk to a male singer you met for the first time, for example, this is a concert at your campus, and that person uh, comes, and uh, see, here, in case of party, uh, you are less careful about your distance from others, about negative politeness. So here you uh, actually switch over to positive politeness. You try to welcome others, greet others, 
to uh, come closer to them. So in the same spirit, when you meet a singer and you ask him, uh, what is your favorite music genre? Uh, you uh, like jazz, classical, etc. Now what happens? The singer replies, tell me names of music genres. This utterance gives a message. Now, in the context of talk, this talk, and norms of campus, you will take it employed because you never expect in this context of COP that your guest would answer like this. So in this context, in light of your campus norms and COP norms, you will take it as employed. The words, the tone, the gestures, they all would lead to your final assessment. The singer's reply is not direct, but conveys a disregard to your question. Actually, what he conveys, that is very, very offensive. And this is the result of impoliteness, that you feel offended, insulted, degraded. So he thinks that when he asks that, tell me names of some music genres, so actually he miss. Uh, and uh, he actually underestimated your knowledge of mu uh, music genres. So he says that they are asking me well, what is the level of their own knowledge and especially women, what they know, uh, know about such kind of serious things like uh, music genres. For a musician, these things are very, very uh, 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 knowledgeable, informative person uh, can know them. So they are very, very important things for such people. He thinks that you cannot ask such question as you know nothing about music. This is offensive and implied. The singer hurts your positive face. It may be a result of misinterpreting each other or conflict. First of all, that it may be a result of misinterpretation. Number one, uh, you, uh, your expectation was that this person would uh, he is a guest, so he would, he would show regard for us, positive politeness. And or it may be a conflict of interactional power. He is male and you are woman. Uh, women. So it may be a gender conflict also. So which of these interpretations of this talk uh, would be regarded as impoliteness, which is the main factor for assessment? So it depends upon different factors which we have talked already in this module. So we conclude to assess that a speech act is polite or implied, a single act during a long talk is not enough. Definitely the talk we have discussed in this module would have started by hi, hello, uh, by sweet exchange of greetings, definitely. This first act was polite, but later on what happened in later utterances? So you can't know this if you uh, don't uh, 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 apply linguistic politeness at longer stretches of talk, uh, 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 to longer stretches of talk like discourse. This is the conclusion of this brief talk about impoliteness. Thank you.